I might have to cough tonight, you see, because I've been swimming a lot, and I go at White City, and there's a terrible draft when the greyhounds go past. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge swimming pool. It's sort of upmarket municipal. You know, the soup machine's got croutons. And... <laughs> <laughs> they play labisifrit. It's, it's a sort of club. We all go very early in the morning, and we all wear nose clips. I think they look silly with a coat and skirt, but I don't know. <laughs> um, it's mainly women. There's the odd man, you know, ploughing up and down like a hairy torpedo. <laughs> mainly it's women, and they all swim with their heads out of the water so they don't splash the cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> they talk all the time, they're swimming, they go, <gasps> Robert's a fiend for sex. <laughs> So I just stay downstairs and plump up the cushions. <laughs> oh, and then I lost a contact lens in the pool and they had to drain the whole pool and I was in a bit of a rush, so I just grabbed the first thing I could see and I'm not sure this isn't a Veruca. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I caught this cough or inhaled a corn plaster or something. <laughs> Well, I can't be coughing all night, you know, the other people in the hostel won't like it. So I thought, well, I'd better go to the doctor. Now, I hadn't been to the doctor for years, not since I thought you had to be inoculated for the Isle of Man. So <laughs> I went over there somewhere where the, all the back streets are, and I saw this little plaque that said, Dr. Greville, fully qualified doctor and carpet fitter. <laughs> Let us loose lay your lino. So there was a little door, it was set in between a turf accountant's and a shop with a window full of ball cocks. So I went in, <laughs> opened the door, there's a rich whiff of damp trouser. <laughs> I followed that upstairs. <laughs> I followed it upstairs to the waiting room, which was full of very poorly looking people. But even the goldfish had a little scarf around its neck. <laughs> and I went up to the receptionist and she said, Can I help you? And I said, Yes, you can put that machine gun down. <laughs> I said, Can I see the doctor? She said, I'm that's not possible. I said, well, can you draw me a picture of him? <laughs> By the time I got in to see him, the price of fish fingers had gone up three times. <laughs> he was very nice. He had a touch of the DTs. But I thought his desk had just clicked onto final rinse and spin. <laughs> you could tell he liked to drink because the surgical spirit was lined up next to the slimline tonic and the ice bucket. <laughs> but he gave me a quick examination, you know, just with the one eye. And uh, he gave me a prescription, which turned out to be a luncheon voucher for a barium meal. So I didn't know. <laughs> So I went three doors down to the chemist, because I'd heard all those adverts, you know, ask your chemist, they know everything. So of course there was a long queue of people checking upon the theory of relativity. So, I went to the assistant, who was a little bit dim. She was stood there rubbing up her engagement ring with a bunion pad. I thought, no, it's nice to know people can be vacant and engaged at the same time. And I said, I said have you got anything for a sore throat? And she said, have you tried sucking a nigroid? And I said, I don't think television is ready for this kind of thing. She said, the best thing for a sore throat is those little black things in a tin, you know, like sucking little bits of tarmac. And they're great. And I went home, sucking away, and the phone rang, and it was my friend. And she said, I've got your contact lens. I said, that's great. So I've got to go now and give her back a Veruca. <laughs> <laughs> doorbells. Twelve classic doorbells brought to you on one album. Remember this? And this? <laughs> and what about the classic? <laughs> and who could ever forget? <laughs> if you've ever had a door, you love doorbells. Remember, this album is not available in the shops. In fact, it's not available. We just made it up for a laugh. That's right, we do that because it's a shoe shop. <laughs> They're a black lace-up, 15.99. Are they? Yes. Can I try them on? On your feet? <laughs> yes. All right, why not? <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, the black ones. They're a flat lace-up. Beg pardon? Well, those aren't flat. Red, aren't they? Yes. Well, I want a black pair. 
I know. I can never get what I want when I go shopping. <laughs> They're in the window. Are they? <laughs> in the skirting board. <laughs> we found droppings by the pop socks. Well, I think they're droppings. Mrs Brinsley says they're Janine's licorice all sorts cos she won't eat the black ones. <laughs> what is it you wanted? Well, I want the black ones. No, they've been swept up. <laughs> you don't think someone might come in asking for hen droppings in a shoe shop? <laughs> Can I try on the black lace-ups in the window? Well, you can, but everyone in the street will be able to see you. <laughs> can you bring them in my size and I'll try them on here? Oh, all right, we're not busy. I'm five and a half. You're very tall. Do you take the <laughs> My shoe size is five and a half. Do you have the black shoes in that size? Yes, we might have. Well, can you go in the stock room? Yes, I can go anywhere here. <laughs> Toilets, backyard, they're very free and easy. <laughs> Yes. Yes, I don't like them. What? Well, I know this woman, she had a pair. She got knocked down by an industrial tribunal. <laughs> They're a bit tight. Ah, uh, Janine, can I borrow your shoehorn, please? Thank you. That's better. <laughs> what is it you were saying? I was saying they're too small. Oh, you're like me, broad-footed. And are you Taurus and can't stick cabbage? No. <laughs> Well, you're not like me, then. Oh, no, I... I'm sorry, but I think you ought to go. They don't like me sitting down talking during shop hours. Well, can't they try these in a bigger size? No! I'm in enough trouble as it is. I mean, you come in here asking for hen droppings. <laughs> you want to get changed in the window? This is a shoe shop, not a soft porn video merchant's. <laughs> and I should know because my husband runs one. <laughs> well, he's not my husband, but he rubbed up against me in a sports jacket, so he's as good as. <laughs> <laughs> It's no good, no good offering me used notes and trips to Bermuda because I've got a very rare skin disease. I can't go in the sun without a woman's realm on my head. <laughs> so you can stuff it! <laughs> because I know my rights. I voted Conservative. The chappy never got in because a lot of people around here had to stay in and watch television that night. <laughs> I never wanted free milk anyway. Very, very allergic. My family. The souls run in my family. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she was like me, broad-footed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we just have a little time between programmes, so I'll tell you about tomorrow night's play, which, according to this, is a searing examination of a modern marriage of convenience. They don't say whether it's entertaining or not. <laughs> I must say for myself, I can't stand anything where people are sarcastic or where the men wear dressing gowns. <laughs> we seem to have quite a rash of these dressing gown plays a few years ago. I think if they're going to start up again, somebody should perhaps contact the people responsible and give them a little bit of a serious warning, perhaps with an ice pick or tongs. <laughs> the way you purchase tongs these days, I don't know. Anyway, tomorrow's play is Fitted Kitchen, Ill-Fitting Relationships, and it stars... Someone I don't like, I'm afraid. Oh, well. In this scene, Paul and Jane are preparing Sunday lunch. What are you burning? What? Oh, the bonfire. I'm burning the television. So that's what the explosion was. Well, what did you think it was? I thought it was my life cracking open. Sorry. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Just remembered something in the Beano. <laughs> Did I hurt you last night? When I threw the wardrobe at you? Yes. My nail varnish may have to be taken off. God, I'm sorry. It's funny. What? That joke in the Beano. <laughs> I used to be so much in awe of you, Paul. But now, you're really rather feeble, aren't you? No. No, Jane, I'm not. No. Who am I thinking of, then? <laughs> I 
can remember when pants were pants. <laughs> you wore them for 20 years, then you cut them down for pan scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> to make lovely quilts out of Selenese bloomers. Every gusset a memory. <laughs> Not bras, though. They won't lie flat, you see. We didn't wear bras till after the war round here. We stayed in and polished the lino. <laughs> and we weren't having hysterectomies every two minutes either like the girls these days. If something went wrong down below, you kept your gob shut and turned up the wireless. <laughs> Never got woken with the teas made. We were knocked up every morning by a man with a six foot pole. <laughs> of course, it wasn't all fun. <laughs> with no showers, we used to club together and send the dirtiest one to the slipper baths. <laughs> we might have been mucky, but we had clean slippers. <laughs> Ooh, and it was all clogs, clogs on cobbles. You could hardly hear yourself coughing up blood. <laughs> For years, we used to make our own rugs. We used to stitch mice onto pieces of sacking. <laughs> but I'll never forget the coronation, 1953. We all crammed into the one little front room and stirred at this tiny grey picture. Someone had cut it out of the paper. Nobody got television till the year. <laughs> I think we were more neighbourly, you know, like if anybody was ill in bed, the whole street would let themselves in and ransack the parlour. <laughs> I mean, if did all this keep fit, whew, we got our exercise lowering coffins out of upstairs windows. <laughs> but if people were very heavy, we used to ask them to die downstairs. <laughs> but it wasn't all gloom. My brother went to Spain, which was very unusual in those days. Mind you, that was the Civil War, and he got shot for trying to paddle. <laughs> but we had community spirit in our street, right to the end. The day they demolished our street, it was like the war all over again. Dead bodies and sticking out of the rubble. I think the council should have let us know. <laughs> That's me done. Best be off. I've got a bit of cellular blanket for me supper. I don't want it to spoil. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I'd like to test. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to test. Oh! Mugging spray, sir. Five pints and seven pints. I've never felt like this before. My head is in a whirl. I met my favorite girl today. There's so much to tell you. I don't know where to start. But this is what my heart must say. I'm just a simple northern boy I'm sure you understand Love makes me shy and that is why I brought along my own brass band <laughs> They're free, it's just a hobby That's what all the noise was in the lobby So when we cuddle I'll snuggle up and hold your hand Just you and me and 33 Big buggers from a big grass <laughs> town And when it's dark, we'll light the lamps And draw the sofa near the fire A cosy spot, oh I forgot There'll probably be a heavenly choir There's fun They don't mind standing They'll be quite happy on the bathroom landing They're singing of my love for you They're singing of my deep desire If I'm stood up, I'll have a couple of women from the heavenly choir <laughs> Let me hold you tight, let's kiss and watch the fire go low. We won't be swept away, cause halfway through I'll play a very loud piano solo.
I'd uh, like a brown brief set, please. Yes, sir. What size? Um... Is it for yourself, sir? Yes. I'm a transvestite, actually. And have you got a film crew with you? No. Well, get lost, you filthy pervert. <laughs> I'd like to see a lot more smocks in these kind of programmes, a lot more collar detail, more pleats, and perhaps some T-strap sandals and floral prints. I like tracksuit slacks when I'm keeping fit, but I don't want to come home and see them when I'm relaxing. I think a lot of women like me, with children to get to bed, would like to see perhaps fitted blazers. They don't have to be black. Maroon is smart for the television. And, as I say, plenty of pin tucks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. Miss Babs has taken the triplets to see Get Carter. They won't be back till this afternoon. No, you won't recognise my voice. This is my first day in the antique shop. I've just been moved up from antique packing. Sorry? Trixie! Trixie Trouble, some people call me. Bye! Here's your cocktail. Don't <laughs> blame me if you want a stomach lining. I won't. Anyway, I only have to snap my fingers and someone I know will come running with a dozen stomach lining. I suppose you mean Mr Kenneth. He's already bought me a leotard and a wet look bra. And what did you have to do in return? You better ask the receptionist at the Formica Motel. Disgusting. <laughs> and him an ex-territorial with triplets. <laughs> That's a matter of conjecture. I found out quite a few things at the Formica Motel. One, that your precious Miss Babs checked in there nine months to the day before the triplets were born. Oh, we <laughs> It's very quiet in here. I hope you weren't talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll have these antiques packed up immediately and sent down to the station. Plenty of sellotape. We don't want any more accidents. Yes, miss. <laughs> How's your new girlfriend, Derek? What was her name? Marie Therese Francine Dubois. Yes, miss. <laughs> She's gone back to the convent, miss. Oh, no. And after all that trouble you went to to find her a pleated skirt. <laughs> Did she leave a note? She left a novel. But I don't think it's very commercial. <laughs> Miss Babs! <laughs> I still think of you, Miss Babs. Whenever I'm watching the show jumping or grilling a tomato. Oh, sorry! <laughs> I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Of course not, Trixie. We were just discussing the best way of packaging a spare tea service. Yes, well, we can't afford to have anything broken now, can we? What do you mean? Like your marriage to Mr. Kenneth? <gasps> it's amazing what you can find in a waterproof packet tied to a lavatory ball cock if you look hard enough. <laughs> The only one round here with a birthmark shaped like a moped. Mummy. <laughs> there is now a new Acorn Antiques book, in addition to the 53 already on sale. <laughs> this one is 195 and tells the tale of Mr. Kenneth and his trip to Manchesterford to see the chiropodist. That's A Waning Moon, published by Acorn Books, on sale at your local supermarket, probably by the digestives. <laughs> yes, that's rather nice, isn't it? Or, in the same price range, we have the Steinway, which is a very nice piano. Well, I don't know, actually. 
actually do have one in this finish, but which plays that too. <laughs> Sarah Wells is 24. Since leaving drama school three years ago, she has never had an acting job, but she's determined to be an actress. I don't want the fame. I don't want the bright lights. I just want to work in the theater because I love the theater. And I'd work anywhere. I'd even work in the North. <laughs> Just be in the theatre. And where are you off to today, Sarah? Well, I'm going into town. I'm seeing rather a high-powered agent at 11. Then I'm up for a commercial. Then I'm seeing the director of the company I'm shortlisted for, which is lovely. Where is the company? Oh, it's in the Midlands or Wales, something like that. Busy day. Then I'll try and squeeze in my juggling lesson. Because I do think it's very important to have special skills in this business. <laughs> And on to the second call of the day, an audition for a television commercial. I know they want someone early 20s, my height, this colour hair, so I'm fairly hopeful. <laughs> oh, that's it. Hi, Sarah! Hey, come on in. <laughs> oh, this, this one, I think. How are you? Yeah, Bob Graham, we met last week. Yeah. yeah, nice to have you with us. I've got a terrible migraine. Very boring, but uh, we, won't, we won't go into that. Look, the, um, the, the purpose of this little gathering is, is not to see how well you can, you can recite two pages of Juliet's death scene. You know, been there, seen it, bought the T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we want to find out about you, and we want you to find out about us. Okie dokie, big and a pokey. <laughs> okay, everyone gather around, please. This is, um, this is Sarah. Hello. Hello. Okay, Hello. Steve, Bill, Tony, Hi. Jane, Hi. Fanny, and Pauline. Hi. And uh, where's Anna? She must be in the loo. Okay. Um, right. <clears throat> We're going to play Leapfrog, right? but with a difference. Your Hamlet, Hamlet. your hinge, bracket, your bottle of milk, <laughs> Mari Lloyd, Milton Keynes, and your Lady Godiva. Okay? Three hours later, Sarah got the job. Is it a good play, your first play? It's written by a girl who works in dry cleaners. It's her first play. And it's all about a girl who works in dry cleaners. Is that you? Oh, no, I play an older lady, Miss Williams, who's teaching this girl about life and so on. I've been working very hard on it, and I know just know she wears pink lipstick. Can, can we please, please just, just have one at a time? Everybody, please, can we just have one at a time? A little bit of order. So, 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 when, when, when Tracy says, I'm sick of the smell of dry cleaning yeah. fluid, she's really saying, I'm sick of my dad, I'm sick of living in a back-to-back, -back. I'm sick of having an unemployed boyfriend who kicks shit out of me, yeah? Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be just that she's sick of the smell of dry cleaning fluid. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, when we run Act One, I'll do it for you both ways, OK? OK. Um, right, are there any more queries? Is this scene on page 30? Mm. Well, all my lines have been cut. I just wonder whether they shouldn't be put back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think we were right to opt for, for silence on this one. I, I think the character has more strength by virtue of her non-participation. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right, Bob. Yes, I see. So, would you bother with the peach lipstick here or not? <laughs> Look, we can all read and write and lay bets. Tracy don't need no more. But Mrs. Mottershed, life is... Education is life itself. And at our disposal. I knew this perfectly last night. Look. <sighs> Look, dear, the audience will have died of old age by the time you get those f papers out. I'm going to work on opening the handbag. We might put Velcro on it. Um, what's, what's the Velcro situation? <laughs> it, it's, it's coming. OK, and again, uh, Fanny, that's smashing what you're doing. It's, it's, it's lovely, it's perfect. Just keep the pain churning away, OK? It's, 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 it's fabulous, great. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Bob, my character.
character just wouldn't wear this cardigan and you told me to off. No. Well, I went and I said, Tracy's mum wouldn't smoke silk cut, she'd smoke Benson and Hedges. And he said, put silk cut in a Benson and Hedges packet. It's not the same. Let's face it, if you're not a fanny, it doesn't really want to know. She's very good, though, isn't she? Just a little bit shallow, though, don't you find? Her boobs are quite saggy, too, aren't they? That's true, actually. <laughs> it's the first night. It's from Bob. To be or not to be, that is the question. Be good, Bob. Ha! What's that, a quotation or something? Don't know. <laughs> oh, first night. <laughs> So good. <laughs> Two days later, Bob Graham heard that his grant had been taken away and the company was disbanded. There'll be more attempts at fun from the overweight comedian next week. day and do you know what I was doing I was boiling an egg simply standing there in a PVC apron boiling an egg and I looked round my kitchen with its nice clean surfaces and the clock ticking away and the kettle whistling and I said to myself you know Bob old chap there's something missing. And at first, I couldn't put my finger on it. But then, as I lifted my nice brown egg out of its boiling water, I knew what it was. A spoon. <laughs> Here we go. Before I say goodnight, we'll just have a quick look at what's going on in our area over the weekend. There's an autumn fair at St Paul's Church Hall at two o'clock on Saturday. I suppose they think if they spell it with a Y, more people will come. There's a concert on in the town hall. Enigma Variations, Beethoven's Ninth. Nothing we can't hum there. <laughs> and Saturday night sees the last performance of The Stars Look Down at the Mineshaft Theatre. The play is about miners. It's set in the northeast, so not only will they all have filthy vests and black faces, we won't be able to understand a single word. <laughs> Still, I must say, in the mine shaft's favour, they do do a marvellous quiche. <laughs> well, that's it for tonight. Have a lovely weekend. I'm going to Tewkesbury to see my grandmother, who's rather frail and has a very nice sideboard, which she may possibly leave. Kicks <laughs> the bucket. Good night.